so in capacity market uh, uh, we already studied that the load serving entities uh, could select their suppliers and book some capacity um, based on their requirement uh, in the example we discussed um, the utility was serving uh, the whole load demand uh, of a city uh, having um, the shopping malls then uh, industries and residences so based on that 120 megawatts was the estimated um, load demand so based on that um, an auction was done and uh, the the buyer and seller participated in the auction and there was a market clearing price based on that settlement was done uh, for the capacity okay capacity that is booked now uh, with this uh, we move on to uh, day ahead market uh, you see the spelling of capacity is uh, wrong it is written capacity here and also uh, in the first page we have uh, the spelling of tertiary wrong it's it's actually tertiary mm, so uh, please uh, note this now we move on to the day ahead market so what is done in day ahead market 24 hours prior to the day of consumption um, again uh, advanced purchase is done and uh, buyers inform their estimated consumption for the next day based on that um, uh, we can have settlement mm -hmm. so we'll see an example so the estimated consumption for the next day which uh, uh, the buyer submits is this for the first six hours 25 megawatts is the uh, consumption then for buyer one then for the next six hours uh, for buyer to 50 megawatts is the consumption then for the next six hours b3 is the buyer and 100 megawatts is the consumption and so on uh, now based on this uh, what's the energy consumption throughout the day how will you find this 25 into 6 will give you 150 megawatt hours um, for b1 for the buyer b1 then 50 into 6 will give you 300 megawatt hours for buyer b2 100 into 6 gives 600 megawatt hours for b3 and 40 into 6 gives 240 megawatt hours for the buyer b4 so the total uh, energy demand for uh, the day uh, becomes uh, 1290 megawatt hour now um, uh, what should be done um, for uh, booking the energy uh, with the suppliers so buyer one can book 150 megawatt hour with some supplier buyer two can book uh, 300 megawatt hour with another supplier or maybe from the same supplier that we don't know according to the uh, participation uh, similarly for b3 and b4 they also book some um, uh, capacity okay so if buyers feel uh, they will have the same load uh, per day for a long term then uh, maybe for a month uh, then they can book it in advance uh, for a long term uh, what is that you can see here 25 megawatts is the consumption for buyer one for the first six hours suppose he feels that for the whole day his consumption would be 25 megawatts itself then uh, his daily consumption is 25 into 24 megawatt hours right and uh, he assumes that uh, the same consumption pattern will be followed for the for 30 days or for one month then he can book this capacity with the supplier or this energy with the supplier uh, prior um, or in advance for the whole month okay so this this can happen in long term also that is what is the point okay um, next we move on to the intraday market where there is a possibility to trade electricity before 15 minutes of the delivery time uh, that means from the day ahead schedule if there is a deviation then we uh, move on to the intraday market uh, so it can happen the settlement can happen before 15 minutes of the delivery time deviations from the day ahead schedule is settled which implies quantity is smaller compared to day ahead because here deviations are only settled so uh, the amount uh, that is settled in day ahead market would be higher compared to this uh, uh, amount of uh, power now uh, price is normally high because uh, it is an unplanned thing uh, suddenly uh, you are informing the, uh, the the ISO is informing the generating unit that you have to increase your generation you have to step up your generation or you have to back down your generation like that um, 
these things are uh, immediately uh, i mean uh, these things are needed immediately so based on that uh, these uh, these are emergency prices so uh, they'll be costly um, obviously costly now uh, we uh, now after this uh, day ahead market we uh, after this day ahead market we moved on to intraday market now we move on to a shorter time frame where uh, primary frequency control is done now this happens in a uh, shorter time frame a still um, i mean shorter uh, time frame uh, the main difference here is uh, we have a better idea of actual consumption or production in contrast to the schedules based on forecast because for day ahead market uh, we have an estimate we we only have an estimate of uh, tomorrow's uh, uh, consumption and generation so uh, um, gen what i mean by generation forecast is if if, if it is uh, renewable energy generation then we have the forecast for generation also right for loads of course we have uh, forecast so based on that only we have a pattern of uh, uh, consumption and generation for the next day so um, uh, now we have a better idea because it is nearing the real time it is almost at the real time because it, this is primary frequency control uh, it happens uh, within 30 seconds uh, the the generators have to be ready uh, or or generators have to activate the primary frequency control within 30 seconds and it can last up to 5 minutes so uh, it should be immediately available it should be immediately made available now uh, now seeing the frequency we um, i mean uh, our assessment of uh, demand, generation demand balance is done uh, based on the frequency measurement if 50 hertz or 60 hertz it depends on the country uh, is the nominal frequency then um, uh, if the system is operating at nominal nominal frequency then it means that enough production is there else if uh, the frequency is greater than the nominal frequency then it means that surplus production is there uh, else if uh, uh, the frequency is less than uh, the nominal frequency then uh, it says that no sufficient production is there so any of uh, in any of these cases what happens is the iso finds generating units and distribution companies willing to ramp up and ramp down based on their uh, remaining capacity that means if already uh, the the one, one of the generating companies is uh, operating at 30 megawatts suppose the total capacity of that particular generator is 35 megawatts then 5 megawatts is remaining right so um, uh, he might have participated in the reserve market uh, based on his uh, ramp rates uh, if he is a if it is a uh, hydro uh, generator then and 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 it feels he feels that uh, he can ramp up his generation in 5 seconds um, uh, i mean 5 megawatts generation in 5 seconds then he he may participate in the reserve market or uh, this particular primary frequency control market uh, primary frequency control activity so uh, he can come in and uh, he he's paid accordingly okay so this is a kind of capacity market that is based on available megawatts for step up or step down prior payment is done uh, we have seen this in the reserve market because here capacity is the key because i am saying that 5 megawatts flexibility is there for me hmm? so again that is capacity in megawatts only it is um, uh, it is uh, mentioned right uh, it is submitted so based on my uh, capacity i am paid okay now um, uh, throughout the day if i am participating in this uh, primary control frequency control activity then many times i may increase my generation i may, I may sometimes i may decrease my generation so based on that on a, on a full day you will get an idea of total energy that is mm, supplied in this but for this particular purpose uh, for any generator uh, uh, the purpose is primary frequency control so uh, in in a full week we will have a total energy that is supplied net energy that is supplied for primary frequency control so based on that the settlement can be done for energy mm -hmm. so act for actual adjustments settlement is done after a week or so mm -hmm. it it depends but uh, this is an example okay a week or so so here prior to the delivery itself based on reserve availability or the ramp up or ramp down availability based on the capacity they are paid and after one week or so uh, they are paid for the actual energy adjustments actual energy output adjustments that is what is done in primary frequency 
control now coming to secondary frequency control in primary frequency control they were paid for capacity in secondary frequency control they are paid for both capacity and energy in secondary and tertiary frequency control they are paid for both capacity and energy in secondary frequency control generators are paid for not producing as well that means already suppose a generator is uh, participating in the activity of primary frequency control um, at 40 megawatts uh, output uh, but suddenly uh, you see that uh, the frequency is high the, because of some reason so uh, they have to back down the iso instructs this uh, unit to back down its generation from 40 to 38 so 2 megawatts is reduced now so he is paid for this 2 mega 2 megawatts reduction also he was already paid for this 2 megawatts in the 40 because for for 40 megawatts he is already paid right for reducing the 2 um, uh, megawatts he is again paid so this 2 megawatts is actually paid twice so uh, this is a, uh, a kind of uh, i mean the profit is high for the generator in 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 this case when when it participates in secondary frequency control because actually he is produ- producing 2 megawatts less but uh, so so he has the, uh, the savings from the uh, reduction in fuel cost but he is still paid so that is what is happening here uh, that is the example given here if 40 megawatts is already producing uh, already produced and because of increase in frequency it is back down to 38 megawatts then the 2 megawatts is paid two times it is already included in the 40 megawatts but still he is paid hmm? so Uh, he can save on fuel cost now primary control is activated in 30 seconds and can last up to 5 minutes still if the frequency is not nominal then we go for secondary control so uh, we move on to a shorter time frame hmm, to to uh, adjust the frequency again from the secondary control uh, if it is still not in equilibrium we go for tertiary control hmm. so uh, we we move on to a i mean it's still a shorter uh, time frame hmm. uh, now you can see the plot here the the first uh, segment here b- before this uh, dotted line and in between the dotted line and the horizontal axis uh, this is the primary frequency control so the frequency is dropped during operation so uh, the iso instructs uh, some units to um, Uh, increase or step up their generation so based on that the frequency has increased but after primary frequency control also still there is a deviation in frequency so again it moves on, it moves to the uh, secondary frequency control still adjustments are done mm-hmm. then again uh, there is a problem some fine tuning is required now so based on that tertiary frequency control is done so the speed of response demanded mm, is Uh, it it differs in these three cases right obviously for tertiary frequency control very short time frame is only available for adjustments so in that case uh, uh, storage has a role storage has an important role because these are momentary adjustments right momentary mismatches of generation and demand um i mean these mismatch uh, mismatches are are, are compensated uh, by use of some source so uh, battery is a is a suitable source in this particular case so that is what is the uh, different what are the different stages of market uh, primary secondary and tertiary control then day ahead then capacity markets then intraday markets that's all from this lecture we'll continue with ancillary services in the next lecture thank you